Welcome, guys, in a new perspective. This is Barbara and Michael today. Uh, we are coaches that are helping people to uh, change their lives in the area of their relationship with God and other people. And we are here today to uh, talk about, uh, one, about one specific topic, and that's uh, what's going on behind the porn industry and how to overcome uh, sexual sin. So, uh, Michael, welcome. I heard uh, that uh, the father has took you on a journey when he was giving you some revelations on what's going on uh, behind the scenes of uh, the porn industry. Uh, would you like to share that with us today? Yes, for sure. Um, I would love to. It was one of those moments when the Lord started speaking to me about certain things, especially with that industry, because that topic itself is very confidential that not a lot of people actually talk about at church. And when we do talk about them, it's mostly surface level. We only see what we want to see or what they would like us to see. So we could only perceive that filter but we're not actually seeing what's going on inside. Yes. You know, and um, coming from BSSM, we've had multiple speakers that are against pornography and um, participating with certain organizations such as Exodus Cry to help demolish or to put down one of the biggest porn companies in the world. And that really got into my mind to why people are so attached into that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And I tell you the truth, and, and you know this, Barbara, that I've been there, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm pretty sure majority of us been there. And it took a while for, for people to overcome. So the question that came into my mind is, why? Mm -hmm. And how did this happen in the first place with understanding behind the spirituality of things most of the time we don't see these things we don't see the principalities that are hovering over certain companies that actually have spiritual spiritual energy spiritual power over people when they participate with these things so one of the the, the few things that the lord brought me to a certain revelation is to understand how spiritual um, manifestations in those companies work, per se. Past year, I remember uh, while I was studying um, in this school, uh, we would have this uh, city service uh, where we would be doing the horse therapies for uh, the children who would mm -hmm. come from the households where they were whether abused uh, or coming from the families of uh, alcoholic uh, parents and the, the funny thing is that not only children but even animals being abused wow. and therefore being um, now, now ministering or their stories ministering to these children as a bridge of connection so they can open up their hearts and um, speak about the trauma that uh, they yes. went through and I could tell you like you could see that on their faces on their behaviors uh, how uh, that scene or that um, behavior mm -hmm. of uh, you know twisted use of our sexuality right. uh, impacted uh, these little children from their very young age and even animals and we would love to talk about it uh, today and um, could you could you please share with us uh, what's going on or why people feel drawn to uh, watching the porn or even being uh, practically and physically involved uh, in such porn industry right yes thank you for sharing that and uh it is a very devastating thing to experience i've experienced that myself firsthand um being molested and being abused when i was a kid and my parents my parents didn't know about that and all i knew was that okay um an adult showed me this i think this is okay 
-hmm. So to a certain age, especially with, 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 with the age from, I'd say go five to 12, um, your curiosity is, is the peak of its level. You know, you're mm -hmm. always wanting to learn new things, wanting to try things, and you wanted to follow what you see an adult is doing. Yeah. Right? And it's just a common thing. It's a natural thing for a, a, a kid to follow their parents or an adult in general. Um, and so I, I, it, it devastates my heart to know that people actually go through this. Mm -hmm. And I tell you the truth, a part of my research is to do or to listen to certain interviews online on YouTube. And I've found various people that are in the porn industry that have similar, similar upbringings, similar traumas, being abused by their parents or an adult and having their sexuality triggered in a very early age. Mm -hmm. And without proper coaching, proper mentorship, they don't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. And they just start gooping around, per se. Yeah. And believe me, that's what I did. That's what mm -hmm. I did. Recently, I, do, I think it was two years ago or three years ago, I started to actually look into ways of how to, to overcome these addictions because it wasn't just about pornography, right? Mm -hmm. The addiction wasn't about pornography, but because of my sexual desires was triggered and it was uncontrolled from the very beginning. And so I, I found this person online. He's more of a, a, a health coach, mostly for uh, people who are wanting to overcome pornography. He, he said there in one of, the, one of his program is to, go sit down and reflect and find out how many hours do you spend watching on porn. I was amazed to a certain degree that I was very disgusted to find out myself of how many hours I've actually devoted myself in watching pornography. And it came up to 16,000 hours, almost half of my life being stuck in that reality 60 wow. hours and you know I, I i i i listen and i read john maxwell's book and one of the principles that he says hey if you want to be a master of one thing right for say a trade a career sport do it ten thousand times and tell you barbara i did <laughs> this thing 16 16 000. i was a master at watching pornography <laughs> oh my I was like oh when 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 I when I I did the math when I when I followed the program I was like oh my goodness I didn't realize this I didn't realize that I was so addicted to pornography until mm -hmm. I actually found out the amount of hours that I was going through every day right on and I was so frustrated I was so frustrated and not only that it seems like I couldn't figure out a way out Mm -hmm. I couldn't find a way out of this. I tried doing, um, uh, reading self-help books. I had uh, multiple coaches, right? Mentors, per se, mm -hmm. life coaches that have helped me develop myself um, in many areas. And yes, there are fruits, but it seems like with this particular aspect, I couldn't, I couldn't receive a breakthrough. Mm -hmm. I couldn't receive a breakthrough until recently, actually, when... Uh, I met my spiritual father, David, when I started living at his house in Reading. And man, the, the freedom, it was, oh my goodness. It, just thinking about it right now, just kind of makes me want to cry because it's so tangible and it's so real, <laughs> you know, that I never would have thought a man like me having these issues, 16,000 16, hours, could be redeemed Amen. in a brief moment could be redeemed mm -hmm. and experienced freedom through Jesus yeah I'd like to I'd like to talk about what's going on behind the scenes of pornography and obviously with the people and the, the mindset behind it both physically and spiritually 
to why people are so inclined and drawn to participating in this industry. So one of the first things that I realized is actually um, is, is the spiritual principles that applies into that industry. Now, guys, yeah. if you would have any questions uh, concerning uh, this topic that we are just talking about, feel free to comment and to the best of our ability, we will try to answer uh, to that in this call. Go, yes. uh, go ahead, Michael. Yes, for sure. We would love to have your questions and uh, hopefully this would bless you guys, you mm -hmm. know, and receive some breakthrough um, and just uh, send some impartation your way if you're going through that process. If you feel like um, you, you've lost hope and that you're going through circles and, you know, the wilderness experience. And I just would like to encourage you that there is a way out and there is freedom. There is freedom. And the best part of it is that we're all paid for. Jesus had paid for, he had paid the way for us to be free. Um, so just want to bless you guys about that. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd like to talk about the spiritual aspect of, of pornography and what's going on there. First of all, a lot of us don't really understand that there's spiritual principles that are happening around us without knowing it. You know, we don't know that. And um, there's a scripture actually in Ephesians 6, verse 12 says, For we did not wrestle against flesh and blood, um, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So a lot of the times we wrestle with spiritual aspects, spiritual beings that hover around a certain region, a certain company, a certain area of things. Sometimes we just all of a sudden feel, I don't know, when we step into a certain environment, all of a sudden you feel, you feel dirt, you feel empty. Sometimes you feel depressed. Sometimes you feel angry or all of a sudden you have a headache. Oh man, I have so many experiences like that. I remember, especially like when traveling and flying to different states or different cities, whether in Europe or the United States, I would, um, especially in my early uh, walk with the Lord uh, and not knowing uh, just the dynamic that you express that there are certain uh, atmospheres in the city created by consciousness yes. of people, by behavior of the people. And I would be coming to these places and, and suddenly feeling so sexual or suddenly feeling mm -hmm. so depressed or suddenly feeling like, uh, let's watch a porn, but I didn't know that it's not my issue, that it's not my problem, but I would be right. tapping into this atmosphere or the consciousness of, of people who are living in a specific area or place. Uh, and I'm telling you, man, like a bunch of problems uh, would be just steaming out from not understanding what's going on and how we are actually um, working, how we are right. wired, how our body functions, how uh, how um, sensitive we are and that we are actually able to uh, to discern what's going on around us. Uh, not that we would be uh, victims of that, but that we would be, we, that we would be bringing the provision of a solution and um, reigning like kings and queens, the sons and daughters of God to bring transformation wherever we go. Right. That's right. And, you know, that's the thing because we are born to be receivers to a certain degree. Yes. As a man, we receive, right? We give and take, but most of the time we do receive. Um, and sometimes we're not, just, we're not aware of that. Mm -hmm. And this is why our physical uh, bodies all of a sudden starts to manifest certain aspects of things. And sometimes we're just, just like, okay, where did it came from? Is it me or is it someone else or is it mm -hmm. the principality, right? Um, I'll give you an example with that, with, with, that, with, that out, with the mindset, I believe, you know, with, with, with spiritual principles. And I'm going to land it with the physical, with science, per se, as a practical side of things. Um, we, we know about gravity, right? Mm-hmm. We know gravity, especially in this atmosphere, here on Earth, there's a gravitational pull. And that's what we call the free fall effect, right? If there's yeah. weight, it'll, it'll go down. 
So I'll give you an example. First, uh, let's say there's a five-year-old kid, and 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 this boy likes to watch superheroes, likes to watch Superman, and five-year-old kid doesn't know a lot of things. A lot of science still growing. Nobody taught him about gravity. Just because he saw Superman flying on TV, he thinks he can do it. Mm-hmm. Now he decides to go up the roof, thinking he could fly. He jumps off the roof, mm-hmm. and guess what happens? He falls, mm-hmm. gets into an injury. Probably could cost his life. Without your awareness, spiritual principle still applies. It's the same thing with gravity. You do not need to know gravity, but gravity applies even without you knowing it. Mm-hmm. And so when we indulge in certain aspects, in certain companies, specifically with pornography, most of the time we don't know the spiritual behind it. Yes. Or what it's actually doing and triggering us to participate with it, you know? And all of a sudden you have these thoughts in your mind thinking that is yours. And it's funny because it sounds like your voice at the same time. Yes. You had those moments before? Absolutely. You know? It's that's so why it, that's why it was difficult for me to discern that it's actually not my problem because I would feel it almost like inside of me, this voice or this feeling being so real and like like a part of me, but actually it wasn't. It never has been. Yes, <laughs> exactly. It's, it's never been yours in, in, to begin with because mm-hmm. the reality of who we are is that we are sons and daughters of God. Amen. The, the wheat and the tear. Right? It's the sorting out of the voice of God within us. And that's true, um, obviously, with practice and relationship with the Father. Mm-hmm. You know, And so um, in my journey of investigating the industry, I've found many things that can actually affect people's lives, that can cause them depression, um, social misfunctions, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, they, 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 for whatever reason, people don't know how to talk to people anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a big issue actually, especially for men, because, um, we didn't know that we actually start to objectify people when we participate in pornography. Right. And it actually, um, doesn't help us to build trust anymore. There's a certain filter in our eyes and that yes. filter can prevent us to see the person who they are. So um, there were many things that that I that I they saw and I've heard specifically that triggered your mindset when you indulge into porn. And I realized and I asked the father about this because in pornography they use specific words, specific words, and they give an emphasis when they say it, when they're doing the act. And then I asked the father about that and why. And he said, these are actually spell casting. Mm -hmm. These are curses. (laughs) And all of a sudden, when you hear that word, first thing that comes into your mind, boom, is that scene. It is programming your way of thinking. This is a very basic principle of witchcraft. From what I was taught is that when witches and warlocks, when they throw curses, they don't speak it aloud. They actually just murmur it. They just, they, in, in a whispering voice, but within the frequency, they entice you. Mm-hmm. They entice you to listen and they entice you to do the act that they want you to do to a certain degree as well, because we, we yes. didn't know anything. We, we lack knowledge around this, yeah. this um, industry or, or, or this specific field of things. Right. Yeah. But I know for the fact that there are certain people out there, especially in the porn industry, that know what they're doing and have the intentionality to grab people's attention. And I've heard that through many interviews. Actually, they they do specific, um, I would say, specific words, specific actions, uh, gestures of their body, you know, mm-hmm. to emit sexual energies so yes. that it would be 
attractive to the opposite sex. Mm -hmm. You know, and so there are many things that are going on there, and uh, um, it actually reminded me of the book of the Hindu book Kama Sutra. Mm -hmm. And I was reading um, a part of the book a couple of days ago, and one of the basic principles of, of Kama Sutra is about sex, economy, and religion. Mm -hmm. Sex, economy, and religion. Now, if you look at it, what is porn? Sex, right? Again, it is one of the biggest and and the most, um, I would say, revenue-based. It's its own economy. It's a multi-billion economy. Yes. And promoting religion, all three at the same time being in one platform. It is not just about sexuality, but it's also a money-making machine. Some, that sometimes make it uh, make the process more difficult for those who are already uh, involved in um, yes. uh, in porn industry because I remember back in the days I would uh, come to Amsterdam and time to time we would go to minister to the women behind the windows in the red light district and uh, as we were talking with these people, uh, one, when we were asking them about the reason what is hindering them from moving out is actually that they are so well paid yes. that they, they are no more able, you, you know, they can't uh, to go out and to find a different job because they are so well pay that it's, it covers all their expenses and many times it's not that they were involved in sexual industry you know porn industry because they wanted but because they appeared in some crisis in some tragedy tragedy in their family that they now have to that they had to take care about their children so they found a way how to uh, be selling their bodies and to go you know behind the edge of themselves just to survive and protect yes. um, raise up their children and that that's funny that this was one of the reasons and but as well uh, what is very interesting that many jobs we know that they offer you know a certain um, hours regular hours mm -hmm. when uh, you need to come to job, work per se eight hours. It is on a regular day-to-day -day basis, and now you go home. So the, right. the second reason why uh, these people, these women would share with us, why is, is it difficult for them uh, to um, leave this industry is because now they slavers, right? Um, offer them to work anytime they want which right. provides for them lots of uh, kind of freedom right mm -hmm. and to live their lives how they want right they work when they want which not every job opportunity provides uh so yeah uh so so basically when we were talking with different streams and ministries that are helping these people um, in a spiritual way, they found out after a specific season that it's not only enough to minister to these people in a spiritual way, to tell yes. them who they truly That's are, right. because right. using our sexuality in a twisted way is just not knowing who we are. But it's, yep. I believe that it's not enough to tell people, uh, a person who is struggling with a sexual scene or is even involved in, in a porn industry, uh, who they are, but they truly need, yeah. they need a possibility that will provide for them a job opportunity that would, uh, that would be attractive and that would be, you know, covering the living expenses for them and their families. Right. No, I, I, I completely understand where you're coming from. And uh, I also do believe in the power of the spoken word, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, with God's sovereignty, he makes the growth. Yes. And it's our opportunity to, to sow and, and water the plants. And I do understand where you're coming. I hear you when you said about giving them uh, opportunities and I do believe that I do believe that we we are to have specific opportunities especially with people that are going through um, traumatic events you know yes. a, for a, a good example would be a rape victim you know a rape victim um, and with abortion and all that stuff mm -hmm. you know 
um, with, 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 with sex workers, per se, um, especially in, in many countries, they allow, uh, they legalize prostitution because yeah. it's a means of living. And yeah. it is unfortunate because there are many ways mm -hmm. to make a living nowadays. Mm -hmm. Honestly, we have never experienced this amount of multimillionaires in years. This is the first time yeah. we, are, we are stepping out of the industrial age and coming into the technology age, mm -hmm. right? That it actually helps us to leverage our time and money. So there are many possibilities, many opportunities out there. We just need to, to step into it. Yes. You know, um, and I do understand, yes, that th these are certain people that went through trauma, went through, um, you know, just chaos in their lives that led them into this place. Right. And yes. we would as much as possible, we would like to shine the light. We would like to to prevent uh, to 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 provide for them and and show them the proper way, you know. And, uh, you know, as I was doing my research, there's actually a specific church in 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 that place that that helps people from the porn industry to get to know Jesus. And it's called mm -hmm. uh, XXX Church. And mm -hmm. I've heard some testimonies in that church specifically. And, you know, as I was doing my research about porn stars that, that have quit their jobs and finding, finding why they did it and where they're at now, there's this one particular, um, well, ex-porn star that actually met the Lord through that church. Wow. And I was so amazed with this church because wherever there was, um, there was a, a, what do you call this? There was an event for, for pornography or the, in the industry, they were always there. Mm -hmm. They were always there. They, they were there in the midst, trying to evangelize, trying to, to show love to these people. And there was one particular porn star in one particular service received Jesus mm -hmm. and actually now she became a preacher. Wow. She's a preacher. And to me, with that testimony, if one person made it, thousands can do it. Come on. You know, if one person have showed the way, paved the way, have received the testimony of power, many can do it. Come on. You know? Man, that reminds me the story about the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman that uh, Jesus met, mm -hmm. and now he he brings to her a word of knowledge that uh, she had multiple men, and the man that she's living with right now is not her husband. Yeah, but she was you know hit by the revelation by being seen, but being known, mm -hmm. uh, because I can only imagine imagine how much shame she had to go through and maybe hiding, maybe living under the stigma of society when society was looking at her like an outcast or somebody yeah. who messed it up so many times that she now she is rejected. But now maybe for the first time after so many years, she's, she's feeling seen by Jesus, though it might, probably was a huge conviction. Right. But then she recognizes Christ. He recognizes recognizes the source and now she would be so so freed up and 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 released from her lifestyle that she she came to her city and would would become the great evangelist sharing the the good news yes. and everybody from that city they knew the the reputation of this woman so so the testimony and the transformation that this woman um experienced through the encounter uh, with Jesus was tremendous and life-changing um, for the inhabitants uh, of the place she was living in. That's right. And, you know, the best part of it as well is that when, when Jesus uh, gave her the word of knowledge, he gave it in such a compassionate way that it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't condemning. Uh, yeah, condemning or condescending, mm -hmm. right? Yes. It was pure heart, pure love to see and actually wanting for the women to receive. And I think that's one of our biggest issues as, as Christians is that we don't know how to discern completely. Mm -hmm. There's still a process. There's still a, a mindset of judgment and prejudice in our minds. 
that mm -hmm. when we see, okay, this person is a prostitute, all of a sudden we see all the evil things that she's done just because she's a prostitute, but we never really see who she truly is. Yes. Especially when, when that person gets to decide that she would like to receive, he or she would like to deceive or receive um, the Holy Spirit. Yes. You know, and I think that was the lens that Jesus was operating in is that no matter who you are, whatever you've done, wherever you are in your life, Jesus saw us, saw us all for who we truly are. Come and that is sons and daughters of God. Mm -hmm. You know, that we are righteous. We are righteous in his eyes. I was just sharing yesterday with the family that I'm staying with uh, right now. We were talking about the the need for evangelists mm -hmm. uh, in nowadays, but not only for the people who are living kind of outside of the church um, in order to introduce them to God so they can have their own relationship with uh, with Jesus, but uh, a need to experience evangelists within the church that we would be <laughs> hearing the good news of God because we believe that salvation, uh, you know, or being awakened, being born from above, maybe like one event, but being saved, we are continually being saved, being unwell, being awakened throughout our lives. Uh, that's why I, I felt even in my own journey, uh, as I was growing in God, uh, I came to him and sometimes we have this uh, expectation on new converts, right? Or mm -hmm. new, new, new babies who, who just was, were born, mm -hmm. uh, that they need to be perfect and set free and they would be they would live their lifestyle previous lifestyle of living in sin like immediately and now we have different uh, measuring rods for people who are who don't know christ versus uh, those people who already started to walk with him and what i what i could witness was many times uh, you know judgments and condemnation and you should already not be doing it and not liking it not allowing uh, people to be in the process and um, experience the the good news of the gospel in this area that i truly needed to hear not the voice of condemnation not the voice of you are still not measuring Gap, you should already already be somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, but I have never um, never experienced unconditional love and grace and mercy in this area. Therefore, I kept doing it again and again and yeah. again. Uh, specifically speaking about uh, watching the porn for many years already yeah. as a Christian, and I couldn't get out of it, which was only deepening that sense of you know, shame, tremendous shame. And when I was meeting with uh, different responses from Christians, that would close me even more yep. and deepen that pain and that hopelessness that uh, whatever I do, I can't get out of this and I don't know what, what to do, but I, I already felt bad about myself. But when I opened up myself, I would feel even worse. Uh, right. based on the responses of people. That's I, why I am absolutely persuaded that uh, even in the church, we need those evangelists, those yes, people who on. carry the yeah. voice of the good news, who would be speaking to those who are bound and not only se sexual sin, because I feel like sometimes we are, you know, doing such a difference. It's like this is worse sin and this is lower yeah. sin, right? Yeah. But Christ Jesus died for all of that. Yeah. For all of that, he became sin for us as us so we can be free. And it doesn't matter in which part of the journey or for how long we are in this process that he is walking with us and is unveiling us and releasing us into the freedom that we already carry within us. We are just not aware of that. And we need uh, to hear that good news in that place where we feel content, where we feel like there is no hope, like where we feel like we fell thousand times uh, but we are here to tell you that uh, there is hope uh, we experienced both of us uh, breakthrough and uh, and victory that we are enabled to live in by the grace of 
God and therefore there is hope for everybody else. That's right. And, uh, you know, I, I always laughed about, uh, you know, a certain belief system to theology, especially when it comes to the evangelists, because we feel like the evangelists were supposed to be outside of the church going ministering to the unbelievers, you know, yes. and we forget that there is a certain part of our heart that still, that, that, that still struggles with unbelief. Mm -hmm. towards God and maybe sometimes we need the evangelists in our midst to come and actually try to evangelize that portion of our heart yes, <laughs> yes. you know Absolutely. it's not just about saving souls that uh, man oh Jesus thank you um the evangelist was supposed to reveal Christ as well the same as the, with the prophets yes you know that uh, evangelize introducing Christ but we got into the perspective that oh we need to save thousands of souls millions of souls for the glory of God if but you yet, are called to go after this <laughs> that's true that's true and, and even with that perspective even the book of Revelation says hey he loses none he holds everything in his hands yes you know yes. he loses none and so even with, that, even with that perspective of things, it's like we need to save souls and we need to evangelize. We need to we need to uh, move the kingdom forward. Mm -hmm. But Jesus was saying, hey, the kingdom of God is here. Maybe our way of moving the kingdom is to set the mindsets free so that they can be aware that the kingdom of God is actually here. Yes. It is it's around us. It's within us. Yes. It's all in compassion, it's all in dwelling. It's everywhere. It is, the, it is the pleasure of the Father to give it to us, even to those places of our hearts where we are not aware of it yet. Exactly. And I, you know, I, 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 we know Billy Graham, the great evangelist Billy Graham, right? And he even mentioned there um, in his last days, he says, when he asked someone, ask him a question, hey, would you do it again? Would you do it again? And Billy Graham was known to evangelize in many nations, thousands, millions of souls, right? Mm -hmm. and, and when Billy Graham was asked that question, he says, no, I'll do it for the 12. Funny to me because Jesus did the same thing. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between a disciple and a follower. Absolutely. There are two different things. If you're a follower of Christ. You can be a fan. <laughs> yeah you can like the christian you, theology and still not be the follower it, it, it's like it's like it's like instagram or facebook mm -hmm. i follow you i can unfollow you mm -hmm. <laughs> you can just one click away you know in one of the passages it says there when when jesus was was saying hey eat my flesh and drink my blood <laughs> and then all of the followers left him because he they thought he was weird yes all 5,000 followers, more, I believe, left him and the 12 stayed. Way to go, Jesus. You just ruined your ministry. But <laughs> <laughs> you just ruined your followers. It's not about the amount, right? Come on. Exactly. It's not about the amount of followers. It's not about the... Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not going to say I hold it loosely, but at the same time, it's the people that you sow seeds with. It's the re the relationship. Yes. It's the relationship that matters. Mm -hmm. Those who can lean with one another. And I believe this is a very important details as a Christian that we need to have that relationship, the tangible relationship with a brother and a sister yes. who are willing actually to carry our burden together. Mm -hmm. right no, and, and not give up on one another come on you know well, then it, 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 it defeats the purpose of unconditional love mm -hmm. and if we are called to have unconditional love like jesus like our father did then what are we doing mm -hmm. you know if if i tell you for instance if i tell you that i've sinned and i've done this blah 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 would you forgive me would you still love me would you still mm -hmm. see me the same way as you saw me before mm -hmm. right because that's what unconditional love is. And I think that's what Jesus was looking at when she, when, when he saw the Samaritan woman. He knew. He knew what she was, what, what she was doing, what was happening around her life. But, her, but Jesus' filter was unconditional love that breaks through fear and seizes 
her true reality. This is who you are. There's life. There's life. There's there's life flowing from your belly. Yes. <laughs> no, Jesus was simply reminding the truth. Yes, and even Apostle Paul he says that um, in Book of Romans in chapter eight that uh, the carnal mind is death, right? Mm -hmm. But the the mind of the spirit brings life. Come on. And um, I, once I heard this uh, this quote that. Um, I will a little bit change it because um, I don't believe that concept anymore, but mm -hmm. per se, a uh, carnal mind uh, calls you by your sin, but father calls you by your name. Mm -hmm. And uh, speaking about that, I really loved what you just shared, because would you say that walking with somebody, having somebody in your life who embody that revelation of even though you fail, I don't count your sins because I don't look at you, I don't perceive you, I don't relate to you based on your flesh, but I recognize you by your spirit, by your true identity, by who you truly are. And um, that comes back, I, I just remembered uh, kind of like a testimony that I um, encountered while I was working and doing these therapies for abused children past year, it was a horse therapy. Mm -hmm. And one day I would be working with this particular horse that was called King. Mm. And it was so beautiful because obviously even these animals um, are still on the stage or in a journey of um, being healed from the trauma mm. that they went through. So a particular movement of people around them can trigger that pain from the past and remind them that yep. abusive behavior towards them. Yep. So let's say... Um, just imagine the the kid was on the uh, horseback and I was holding the rope, leading leading the child, and this horse. Any time I would I wouldn't look at him, he would immediately bite me, but mm. immediately. So during this session, he would bite me maybe like ten times to my to my uh, to my hand. But what we had to learn as a therapist was that it doesn't matter what the behavior of the child or the horse what we need to do is to stay calm and uh, e uh, respond in a loving and right. kind way doesn't matter whether the behavior is right or wrong or good or bad uh, we had to provide that stable uh, environment so the animal and even the child can find healing and I believe that that's a huge uh, key for people who were coming from abusive um, yeah. homes because they would be living in chaos uh, people for uh, who were involved in porn industry they are living in chaos for people who uh, are stuck in watching the porn and not being able to break up that cycle they need that stable those stable people who are uh, creating for them that that stability and uh, the message continual same message that you are still left you are left this is who you truly are and during during this session i would get this revelation that isn't that the heart of the father who doesn't matter what we are doing where we are at in our journeys, even journeying out a specific issue in our lives, whether sexual with sexual sin or something else, he is calling us after our true name. He's calling us his royal uh, kings and queens, his daughters and sons. And man, that touched my heart. And I felt, isn't it like so beautiful that so many times we are ministering and, um, you know, to other people, but uh, while we do so, the Father God ministers to our hearts as yes. well. That's right. That's right. And uh, yeah, just going back to that, that, that comment you said about people that go through traumatic events and in, in, especially in that industry, a lot of the times when someone goes through uh, a trauma, life-threatening experience, they tend to go back to it again. It is pretty much like a bondage, a bondage. Because again, we don't, a lot, the lack of awareness of what is really going on. I hold it loosely, but I also do believe that if you don't know what you're doing, therefore the Lord doesn't really blame you for that. Hold you accountable. Hold you accountable for that. Mm -hmm. right? He forgives you. 
right? Mercy triumphs over judgment, I believe. And that is very important as we go through the cracks, as we minister to people, especially in many areas, not just those who are in, in, in porn and or go into pornography, um, yes. but in, 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 in any ways, right? Yes. I guess it's important for us to have or develop a sense of self-awareness mm-hmm. of how we think and most importantly, how we hear things, mm-hmm. right? Or how we see it. What comes to my mind is maybe in a practical sense of what you just shared is to ask ourselves, why do we do what we do? Mm-hmm. Um, because let's, let's talk about it. Um, why, why would people uh, choose porn? to watch Mm -hmm. the porn or why would people uh, choose to commit a sexual sin Mm -hmm. or uh, go even into porn industry? What are those reasons? And uh, I believe that one of those is doesn't even need to be necessarily connected to a past trauma stemming Mm -hmm. from a sexual sin uh, being committed towards us. But I believe so that, uh, you know, as being triggered in, in, and, you know, in sexuality, and now we feel great because that's the way how we are wired. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's a good point to say that there's nothing wrong about being sexual or, um, you know, because we are sexual beings. That's how the father has created us to be. That's, That's why, you know, he said even in Genesis, you know, uh, multiply, right? Multiply. So he created us as a sexual beings. There is nothing wrong about it. But uh, here are um, here are the the ways how this world would like to twist our sexuality and use it in the way how we are not designed for, which would bring distraction and trauma and 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 brokenness. So. I believe, you know, sometimes, of course, it can stem from the from the past trauma, but s- sometimes that sexual, you know, we know that we feel good when we uh, when we are sexual. It brings pleasure, and many times it brings even release from stress. Let's say, therefore, in a moment when people find out, like, oh, that brings me release from stress or brings me release from whatever now we are using something different to get out of totally different area where we might be struggling or uh, facing hopelessness for a long period of time and uh, but we are and we are using the sexual scene or like watching porn uh, like a tool to experience um you know temporary relief yeah. an instant is- temporary relief yeah it is like addictions, right? Yes. Like whatever, whether taking a shot or smoking a cigarette, mm-hmm. it, it is all just for a temporary release. And yes. so is the same with watching the porn. Exactly. It is that craving for pleasure. And, um, you know, I agree that we are sexual beings. That's what we're created for. And the only thing is that we were never really taught how to overcome our sexuality or have dominion over it. You know, back in the day, I think um, David once said this, but back in the 60s or the 70s, like the, the gym teacher would encourage people, especially teenagers, to work out a lot, to go exercise. Or one of the ways to use your sexual energy is to create things. Mm-hmm. Is either, hey, work at a shop, go do some wood carpentry or exercise or anything because your sexuality is actually a creative energy and we do desire to create just like our father create multiply right yes it is actually the strongest energy thereof in the world Mm -hmm. it is to create to procreate Mm -hmm. and it's attached to the spiritual mindset of, of, of of genesis i guess i believe in the beginning when God created heavens and the earth, the creative aspect. And the world tries to manipulate and use your sexual energy for chaos and destruction. Mm-hmm. You know, And this is what porn does to you. It is actually preventing you to procreate. I've heard stories from uh, multiple porn stars that they don't want kids because 
they are so mentally destroyed that their body can no longer um, can no longer feel pleasure. Don't want that to pass down to their generation. That sin consciousness or guilt, mm -hmm. whatever. It actually stunts your productivity mm -hmm. to a certain degree. What we need to do is learn how to overcome our sexual energy and how to direct that properly. Yeah, it's, because it's, there's nothing wrong about having sexual energy, right? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's about what do we do with what the what the father has interested us with and how he has wired us and what is the original design and plan uh, from his heart towards us in this area and learning how to steward it, it here on earth as it is in heaven. Right. Especially for, for men, this is a big issue um, because we were never really taught how to redirect these energies. Yeah. And uh, one thing that I was taught is that when I feel, I, I, I feel the vibration in my body, I all of a sudden I feel like the sexual desire, I was taught to bring that to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Just bring that back to the glory. And the moment you feel it, don't let the enemy plant a seed in there. Mm -hmm. But rather take your thoughts captive, pretty much redirect that to the Lord. Ask the Lord, hey, what can I do with this? What do you want me to do? Can I read a book? What do you want me to create? Do work out, do some research, do productive things. And I, I tell you, the moment you master that, you would be 100% very much so productive. Like you'll, you'll, you'll do things that you thought you've never done. And this is actually a basic principle for athletes, um, especially for fighters. When fighters are preparing themselves for a big event, mm -hmm. their coaches actually tells them not to have sex for at least six months so that you can focus, use that energy for your training. Wow, man, that's amazing. So, so far we have been talking about, we already touched that topic of Okay, so we are created as a, uh, sexual beings. Um, there's nothing wrong about us being sexual, but what do we do with what the Lord, the Father has entrusted us with? And uh, if we have been using um, our sexuality in a, in a twisted way uh, or lived the lifestyle and uh, came into the cycle, experiencing the cycle and maybe hopelessness of how to get out of it, we talked already together that one of those keys for experiencing breakthrough, right, mm -hmm. is maybe somebody who is able to walk with us. Um, I yes. was remi reminded of the story of Peter, who, who had so many issues. We don't know whether he was facing also sexual sins, right, or sexual issues. But we, we saw so many issues that he was walking with, but Jesus, in his patience and with, in, in the truth that he was speaking with in the love into, into his life, helped him to overcome this. And I believe that this is also a testimony of both of us, Michael, that we had and we needed those loving people, yep. uh, those fathers and mothers, um, in spirit, uh, we would be walking with us and encouraging us and speak life, speak truth into these areas and that unconditional love and grace would set us free. That's true. And now, now, now you released another key uh, for overcoming uh, sexual issues or uh, stewarding uh, sexuality is to, in the moment when we feel sexual, we can now re redirect the flow or that vibration happening in our body that instead of being drawn to watch the porn or per se to have sex with somebody, now we can um, uh, direct this energy into productivity, into maybe per se a dream, a vision from the yeah. Lord. Yep. Um, is I've there asked. anything else? Uh, that you would like to uh, advise people who maybe struggle with uh, mastering or stewarding their sexuality? Yeah, my best advice for sure is to find someone or an organization that handles this specific field. Um, with my testimony, you know, when I went to Reading and I, I lived with my rabbi and my, my, with my brothers, 
it became easier for me to overcome it for whatever it, it was just it, it was that quick moment it was very quick all of a sudden these thoughts and these desires just left my body and a part of it is because i was submitted to someone mm -hmm. who overcame i my best my best advice would be find someone that can disciple you in that place mm -hmm. that can walk you through and also that bears fruit i see some breakthrough in this person's life if we don't know how to discern that go ask build relationship with that person yes don't be afraid don't be don't be let that fear out of your body mm -hmm. and participate with the unconditional love of the father because perfect love casts all fear right we need yes. to embrace the father's love you know we need to embrace that and through embracing the father's love we can turn into the goodness of god because the goodness of god leads us to repentance stories and theologies about repentant uh, repentance in general but we were never really taught how to or where to repent we were always taught hey repent repentance is pretty much not doing your sins again we were never really taught where to repent because if repentance in greek says to turn turn around where do we turn mm -hmm. around when we are struggling with this and we want to repent remember the glory right away repent towards the glory the glory is the goodness of god so where's the glory it's all around you is the earth is filled with the glory of god so wherever you go there is glory it yes. is all about the awareness, awareness of, the of his presence right exactly and through that awareness we can we can participate with the, the with, with the love of the father with the goodness mm -hmm. of the father that leads us into who we are as sons and daughters yeah and now we operate through our identity yes rather than trying to grab our identity trying to earn our identity yes we're simply operating through our identity as sons and daughters you know yes for those he foreknew he conformed to the image of the son right yes that he might be the firstborn upon many brethren but one man jesus that was crucified and through his crucifixion, we were all crucified. Yes. And through his resurrection, we were all resurrected. Yes. It is coming to the awareness of that truth that we were co-crucified and co-resurrected. And yes. now we get to participate through the spirit of adoption, the sonship reality of who we are. That speaks to me uh, kind of like what is repentance, turning our awareness to something, right? Mm -hmm. To who is God, where is God, but not only God, but who we are yeah. and where we are. And in a practical sense, I remember as I, um, at the beginning, I mentioned that I would be traveling to different uh, places and I would be feeling like this, um, this atmospheres, right? Like, or the mm -hmm. consciousness of people or the lifestyles of people living in the area and now, um, we spoke about how to overcome or, or how to navigate your sexuality when uh, uh, when you personally struggle with something, but what if or how would you discern or how would you navigate that if you are tapping into the atmosphere of other people um, that you are one with and uh, mm -hmm. there's no shame in doesn't matter whether one or the another but right. what would be helping me is as i traveled is to is to turn my focus on where am i at right now right. and the scriptures tells us that we are being seated at the right hand of the father and the earth is our footstool therefore everything that is happening in these areas is under my feet and yes. just this realization this awareness that i am above Mm -hmm. above everything all of this consciousness would help me to to feel this tremendous freedom and being um, being above that right not being right. influenced by it because it doesn't mean that we will never be feeling things but we don't doesn't have to be influenced or being um led by what we feel right and coming coming back to uh what you were talking about uh, overcoming it even in a personal life, I would, 
I would remember this advice that, that once I got um, that anytime I would feel sexual and being drawn, like just watch this porn or open up, you know, this website or whatever, I would open up my door of my room. Because have you ever realized that usually these temptations comes when we are alone? Yes. Why, why does it not come when we are around other people? That's right. Come on. Is it is it possible that we wouldn't be tempted uh -huh. or we wouldn't be drawn or we wouldn't make such decision if we are around other people? Come on. But when we are alone, now these voices or these these offers, right, comes to us, and now we have a choice. Mm -hmm. So I would open up the door because that would stir up the the awareness of me, like other people sees me. Yeah. And therefore, I'm not going that direction. And it is practical decision being made to the outward world, which direction I go. And I would tell you guys, the moment I would open my door, all that that energy, that, that frequency, right, that the voices would be off, yeah. would be switched off. And everything would leave me and I would feel fine and about, about that thing. Or... Uh, open your door or call your friend mm -hmm. and I'm telling you sometimes sometimes I didn't make it like honestly yeah. and but do you know guys why why I wasn't uh, able to call my friend any of my friend mm -hmm. because I would already feel shame mm -hmm. that I am feeling these emotions that I'm hearing this thought and I already felt condemned though uh, but it is said, it is, you know, we might feel tempted, but that doesn't mean that we already committed the sin. It doesn't make us dirty, but that's the presence of that lie that tries to uh, come into our lives and uh, persuade us to make a decision based on that, that we are already off, that there's already something wrong about us and we better not to share about it. We better not to open up the door and call our friend because uh, we are already broken and there's something wrong with us. And I would like to ask you, Michael, what would you tell people like who are maybe struggling like with this shame that even that they are facing maybe the... Uh, the issue with watching the porn or masturbating or mm -hmm. you know falling into sexual sin how how would you uh what would you tell people who experience this shame and how to navigate that i would definitely understand where they're coming from mm -hmm. first of all that would be my, my 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 biggest advice is like hey i completely understand where you're coming from and relating to them where they're at yes and First, I can relate to that. Trust me. We, we, we talked about this in the beginning of this the video, of how many hours mm -hmm. I've been watching pornography for the past, I don't know, 13 years of my life. And it was very devastating. But um, anyways, it would be leading back again to that conversation that we have about the Father's blood, of how Jesus saw the Samaritan woman, or even with a prostitute that was called an adultery. And it's coming from that perspective that, hey, the love of the father is the one that casts all fear. Yes. And introducing that love through our actions, mm -hmm. maybe through the words that we speak over them. Yes. You know? Being that embodiment of grace, right? That embodiment can be, of grace. That can be, you know, expressed by understanding, releasing the understanding and meeting yeah. people where they are at and telling them there's nothing wrong about it where they are at right and that there is there is hope there is a way out and and they are not alone in that place and there are people who love them and are willing to walk with them because we don't see those people different than other people who might be uh, not struggling in that area right, right. and releasing power mm -hmm. all this is what this is what paul was saying hey i'm gonna come to you with power and not just about puffed up theology and doctrine and teaching. No, I'm, I want to see the power, the yes. transformational power of the spoken word. Yes. That is true, the fruit of the person. And there, that's one of the reasons why Paul can speak these things because he had fruit in his life. 
because he had victory, right, in this exactly. area. Exactly, exactly. Let my sufferings be your constellation. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let, let it be your glory. I suffered for you already, brother, mm -hmm. that you may receive great truth. And, and also, I, I feel like there is hope, like for people who were struggling in this area, uh, you might be walking in the shoes of many others who are still bound and be and if you are not at the end or experiencing already the victory know this that um, you are just right now um, storing up the compassion you are about to release on those people one day because you know how does it feel not having hope, f falling apart again and again and again and trying and falling and experiencing shame. And one day you might be used by, by the Father God to bring uh, the freedom and set captives free um, yeah. that, the, that the Lord himself be, will bring into your life so you will be able to minister to them life yeah, and transformation. Right. right. A spirit of prophecy, through your testimony, people can receive great truth. Come on. And that is what we what we do. That's what we carry as Christians. We are supposed to be Christ bearer, grace bearer. Yes. We are bearing the grace for others. Amen. As we overcome certain issues, we can pass it down so that these people can overcome as well. Yes. The very aspect of a father is to pass down inheritance. Amen. As we receive inheritance of our forefathers, we bring it to the next generation, to our kids, to whoever. Yes. Virtually or physically, it doesn't matter. But that's the nature, the very nature of a father is to bring down inheritance, pass it down. For sure, I, I like the fact that what you said there about doors being open, mm -hmm. because if you think about it, the first temptation happened when Eve was alone, mm -hmm. right? And right. then Jesus was tempted by the devil when he was alone. alone. <laughs> <laughs> However, Jesus, through his wilderness experience, his alone time, he overcame. Amen. So it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't necessarily uh say that when we are alone we get tempted a lot actually actually through if we if we learn how to overcome then even when we're alone we're not tempted anymore because we've overcome and yes. i think that is the main goal of this is that hey right now let's just be honest of ourselves i feel like i'm not confident enough being alone, being in my room, being in my sex, being in my special place, right? Being in my bed alone, maybe I should have someone, maybe I should open my door, have somebody that can be accountable, having a par accountability partner, a mentor, for say. I'm, that's, that's my biggest advice of all time. It's like, if you want to receive a breakthrough, be disciple. Mm -hmm. It's plain and simple. Submit yourself to someone that bears fruit, that have authority. And not only that, are willing, the person willing to build a relationship with you, genuine relationship that would like to walk with you through thick or thin. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. person wants to walk with you and show unconditional love the Father. A couple of tips. Obviously, discipleship, having someone um, to mentor you accountability partner could be a person or an organization um there's a few online uh, i think bethel has a couple of organizations that 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 deals with this specifically as well um and then practical side of things configurate your wi-fi put a, a dns or a firewall that can prevent explicit images or or information in your data. Mm -hmm. I've tried that before. There was a time that my router was completely shut. I couldn't even, and it helped me for a time season. And then my phone at the same time, not only connected to the Wi-Fi, but 
I program my phone to block specific websites. Not to be exposed to that. Not right? to be exposed. Take every thought captive, knowing that if this thought comes up, what is the fruit of it? Mm -hmm. Where is it leading you to do? Is this from the Lord? It sounds like it, but the fruit doesn't. It's not the Lord. Because the Lord always manifests good fruit. Wash yourself with scriptures. Meditate upon scriptures day and night. Mm. Have that interaction with the Father. You know, Practice self-awareness. And ask yourself these questions. Where is this coming from? Where is the trigger coming from? Why am I feeling this? Where did this first start? It? Why is that when I hear this word, all of a sudden it triggers me to this specific video? Because there are people out there. Why people do I want there. to do this, right? Yeah, exactly. Specific words that are used in pornography, when we hear them, all of a sudden we talk about instantly, almost instantly, porn. Having or practice self-awareness and self-control, yeah. right? Come on. And most importantly, no. That the shepherd is within you. The yes. father is within you. And he will lead you to green pastures. And that's how we distinguish the wheat and the tear. What is the flesh's voice and what is the father's voice? I hope that helps. I hope that blesses people. Now, and if you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Right? And uh, contact mm -hmm. us for sure. Is there anything else that you'd like to say? Um, I, was, I was reminded with uh, one more thing. Um, that there is a scripture in Bible that says that if a man right um, looks at the woman lustfully. in a sexual way, lustfully, right, he commits adultery. But right. lust uh, stems from lack, right? Mm -hmm. And now, how would people overcome, you know, looking at the man? Because we are na we are naturally uh, we are naturally yeah, exactly. cre created in a way that oh, women are attracted to men and when we yeah. see a nice man like you know we, we feel that emotional reaction in this very same way uh men right mm -hmm. but you know looking at the women looking at men in a way like oh now i imagine him naked or having a sex now we are stepping behind the lines mm -hmm. right and um, I remember, Michael, one day we would, um, in the past, we used to talk about this topic and you shared an amazing wisdom how to overcome that. Um, do you remember? I, I, I do. Yes, I do remember that. Um, let me go back to the scripture because uh, Jesus says that as a man, right, sees this a woman. A wife, actually, it wasn't woman. It's wife. Yes. Mm -hmm. Another man's wife commits adultery in his heart already. Mm -hmm. So it, he, he, he was referring to a wife. Mm -hmm. That is adultery. Yes. If you are thinking of having sex with another man's wife, that is adultery. Yes. Right? Fornication is different. Fornication yes. is having sex uncontrollably mm -hmm. with no commitments. That is fornication. Yeah. So that scripture talks about the very aspect of a man having commitment with a wife and you still thought lustfully against them or with yeah. that person. That is that what that was what the scripture was. Um, it didn't necessarily say, hey, if I um if I, I thought of lustful thing against women, it's adultery. No, it's that's fornication. Yeah. Right? That, that's fornication. Um, but what I was taught is that in the beginning stage of of my transition, when I was being discipled. Um, David would always tell me that when, when these thoughts comes, right. And, and you're right, especially for men, our eyes are our triggers, right? This is our yes. sexual gland, our eyes. It's not our touch. Women is touch, mm -hmm. but eyes are for men. Mm -hmm. So how to redeem that and how to have mastery over that is what David said, when you look at someone and it's only natural, hey, this, this woman is gorgeous, amazing, right? We, we are to, to we, we, we give affirmation, right? Yes. But at the same time, preventing lustful motives in our hearts. Mm -hmm. Because I think personally that is where fornication starts is when you see someone and you're attracted to that person as a man, you, you see someone, 
and then all of a sudden you start to want to have sex that that it's the motive of the heart and yes. when i was going through the process david taught me that when 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 i see someone attractive i don't give space to the opposer i don't give space to the enemy to corrupt my mind when i see someone beautiful we start blessing them oh mm-hmm. oh my god she's beautiful lord look at her you you made this beautiful creation bless her bless her lord that she may receive your blessing that she may find her boyfriend or husband whoever maybe she's married bless mm-hmm. her family life instead of having lustful thoughts you know yes. give them blessings yes. redeem those thoughts take captive of those thoughts and just bless them turn them into praise right exactly turn them I into would, praise i would even uh, remember one day you would advise me like when i would feel sexual start to praise the lord like direct that energy that vibration to praise god exactly. and the same invite god into your process into what you is going on in your body because we are created <laughs> as a temple of the holy spirit right we are created to have that innermost intimate connection with him so doesn't matter what is going on we can switch we can turn into the the contact uh, into connection with the father and now we can have a uh, uh, you know vogue relationship we can have a conversation we can praise and thank him for yeah. that beautiful men or that beautiful women of how amazingly and wonderfully they are being made and we are telling you our own testimonies and experiences that we we had by you know feeling sexual when seeing a beautiful man or a woman and we would turn that into worshiping thanksgiving to the father for this person and our eyes would totally uh, you know turn seeing this person through the eyes of the father and be a blessing to them, uh, wishing them the best, wishing them to find their spouse um, yeah. and seeing them successful, you That's know. Right. That's right. And, and you'd be surprised of, of, of how free you can become mm-hmm. when you develop that mindset, when you master that. Whatever that you see, whoever that you see, all of a sudden just praises comes. And it actually allows you to be more appreciative of what you see. You yes. be more appreciative of the person. Oh my goodness, like, God, thank you. This is amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, you'll see the you the 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 creative aspect of God, His yes. creation. You marvel. Yes. It's like when you go up to the mountains for the first time and you see the majestic side of things, beautiful yes. touch. Yes. And you and you would question, you would wonder, how did God made this? Holy. Mm-hmm. holy yeah. that is amazing that mountain is good Come you know on. same thing same principle apply that to your uh, apply that to to people yes so would praise you god. praise god he made you come out would you say <laughs> you that know? it is a practical way how to shift ourselves from last into love right mm-hmm. because what is doing last last is I am lacking something, therefore I need you to complete me. Mm-hmm. But love, uh, and this apply into sexual sin, into watching porn, uh, we need to realize that all of those things, we try to fill some kind of a gap or a hole inside of us to complete us, to fulfill us, to co- you know satisfy us. And it's all about us. Mm-hmm. But true love... It's all about everyone. All, it's all turns and focus on everybody else yeah. therefore uh, in a in a way how the father created us as a sexual beings or you know is is to be married obviously um, but to to express love and ever focus on loving on others not Amen. using the sexuality to draw the affection of others to make us feel better about ourselves but out of knowing who we already are in the father now uh, we bless our people and we love on our people in even in a sexual uh, in a, with our sexuality that's true and that completes the or that, that fulfills the law right Love yes. your neighbor as you love yourself. Yeah, I, uh, I appreciate the conversation. I know this topic is very sensitive to certain people, mm-hmm. considered taboo, actually. They don't want to talk about it. Um, 
but uh, I think it is necessary for people to be aware of what's going on. Yes. Not only from the outside, but from within. Amen. You know, and look ourselves and find out who we who we truly are. Yes. And and seek the desires of our heart. Yeah. And if there's anything that needs to be exposed, rejoice. Thank yes. you. That is exposed. If you didn't realize that, that that you're addicted to pornography and you just realize it now, let's rejoice. Thank you. That lie has been exposed. And now we can we can switch it to the truth. Amen. Now instead of being shameful about it, no, let's rejoice. Come on. <laughs> and that's Fill that up with the spirit. Thank you, Michael, so much. I feel privileged uh, that we could hear today from you. I just feel I see you like this lighthouse of hope that, uh, you know, was splashed with the waters of this yeah. world, but shines the light of hope and and uh, shows the way to the to the port, right? right. That is that is full of safety and freedom and and a stable ground where people can uh, step out and step into. So yeah. thank you so much for your vulnerability and uh, courage uh, to face this. And I believe um, releasing so many great keys, uh, showing the path of freedom that everybody else can have. So for so, so thank you so much for your generous heart and inviting us um, into your story and heart. You're welcome. Thank you for having me today. Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate you. Hope we bless you guys. Yeah, so we bless you all. If you would have any uh, any questions, just uh, feel free to leave us the comment. Uh, you can find us on our personal pages, uh, profiles on Facebook, or we have uh, we are running a YouTube channel that you can find new uh, Nova Perspectiva slash New Perspective on YouTube. And um, see you in next week in the next video. Bless right. you guys.